Okay, kiddos. Um, so, there's already a video tutorial by a industry professional who's very competent, but I'm gonna show you an alternative way to get your sourdough starter going. Um, it takes a good week to two weeks to have a really good active starter to bake bread with. So, um, we can follow along this little science project because you're basically making a culture. And I started some ahead of time on Saturday so you can see where you wanna be in 24 to 36 hours here. So. If you have whole wheat flour, the fastest and easiest way to do this is, and I'll do this by volume because I know some of you don't have scales at home, it's one cup of flour and half a cup of water, and it should give you a nice mushy paste. It'll be probably kind of stiff. And this is it. Um, the reason a lot of the videos you see um, have you start your sourdough for the first time with whole wheat flour or sometimes rye is because all of the exterior of the wheat berry is included in whole wheat flour and there are wild natural yeasts stuck to that already. So you kind of have like a culture ready to happen as long as there's food and water for the yeast to eat, which don't you worry, we'll go into detail about that. So once you have like a mixed paste like this, then you need a container. So I am using, because I have them, um, mason jars. This is, I think, uh, one quart. But you can use literally anything that you can cover and keep things from getting into it without it ending up um, drying out. You don't want a perfectly airtight seal on this because this is basically like a dough. I can just drop this guy in. Put the lid on and I am not going to tighten this all the way just enough. We want air to be able to escape. And that's it. That's how you start it if you have whole wheat. You can absolutely do this. Same thing if you only have all-purpose flour, but it works best and you'll be most likely to have success with it if you have unbleached. Um, and that's because the bleaching process kills some of the wild yeast. Alternatively, you can try and seed your culture with some wild yeast from produce, which is something that I did. And I'll show you what that looks like ahead of time here. I, if you look at this pineapple here, it looks a little sad, but if you look at the leaf, that powdery residue, that is wild yeast. And a lot of your produce has that. So blueberries, you know that nice little frosted look? That's yeast. Same thing on grapes. So if you just have one or two of these hanging around, you can add this into your water and squish it up a little bit to dissolve it in the water. And this will give you a little jump start. So I started one using a pineapple leaf um, on Saturday. And I don't know if you can see how bubbly we are. Let me open up. See all those good bubbles? The leaves are still in there. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with like a berry right now and then I suggest you give it a shot at home. This is not active enough to bake bread yet, but it will be. There we go. All right, so let me move these out of the way. We'll go ahead and do grapes, because those are nice and juicy. I'm gonna keep all of these active starter types going, or initial starters, so that we can see how it turns out. And I've got a little bit of our um, whole wheat flour left in there, but I'm not worried about it. So you don't wanna rinse these off too aggressively or else you are going to lose too much of that yeast. But I'm just gonna get in here and break this up. Make sure you're using um, whatever, if you're doing fruit or produce to jumpstart this, make sure that you are not using rotten fruit because you can get bad bacteria in there that you don't want. The wild yeast produces um, an acidic substance which is what makes sourdough taste sour, and it kills off a lot of bacteria, but it can only fight off so much, so you don't wanna take your chances too much. So I got our squished grapes in there. Same amount of flour, one cup of flour, half a cup of water. Stir it up until it looks like a totally bizarre mush and your parents think that your culinary teacher is nuts. But I promise you, we're gonna end up with some bread. Some of you in this process will end up um, with your culture not working all the way. And if that happens, don't panic, you can just start again. And again, I wanna make sure you and your parents know, if doing any of these cooking projects puts you behind in your grocery budget in a way that is 
problematic, don't do it. I'm gonna be the nicest grater ever on all of this. All right, so same thing. And we leave all those bits of grape in there. It is gonna be a little gnarly, I'm not gonna lie. But it's worth it for really good bread. And sourdough bread, like true sourdough bread, is something special and wonderful. A lot of the sourdough bread you get in the store actually has sour salt added to it um, to make it more sour. And it might not even have wild yeast in it, so it's not technically sourdough bread. You can tell in part if you look at the label and it says that it's sourdough style or San Francisco style because San Francisco has a long tradition of sourdough breads. All right, guys, so that's it for now. We will leave that alone until the same time tomorrow when we will do the first feed on it, and I'll walk you through that then. Be well and have a great day.